Hello and welcome to Match Day Live. Uh, no CAF with me this week because the women's team are training because they went through in the cup. So to talk about the lineup, I'm joined by Liam Potter. Nice and early. Hello, Liam. Hello. Good evening. How's it going? Uh, good, thanks. Uh, you get to avoid shooting practice, so you won't be <laughs> hit by any wayward shots. Well, I hope so. I've got Wayne Brown behind me doing the goalkeeping, so there's still a okay. chance. Who's firing them in? Because that's, <laughs> that's the big question. And have you ticked them off recently? <laughs> No, I've not, I've not annoyed any of those lots, so I think I'm in, I'm in good stead today. <laughs> Excellent. Right, OK. Um, unsurprisingly, there you are. No changes. Um, so uh, just looking through that lineup um, and uh, in a bit more detail, really. Uh, Jack Stevens, obviously, with Eastwood signing his contract, um, real statement of intent that that is, is competition for places and he's, he is willing to fight for it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the goalkeepers union are a very tight knit um, group, and we've now got two very good and capable goalkeepers at league one level who will offer a lot of competition to each other. Really, so it'll be really interesting to see how that evolves, and um, yeah, who, who takes the, the number one shirt next season? Yeah, um, right. Just in front of them, um, Ruffles, Atkinson, Moore, and Long. Obviously, straight away back to to playing in the same side. Long and Ruffles were, were on the same wavelength. But also, I thought Moore absolutely bossed it on Saturday. Yeah, I think it was um, one of Elliot's best um, best performances in an Oxford shirt. I think we showed his leadership qualities more than ever. Um, he was constantly communicating with the other back form with Longy and Ruffs coming back in. Um, you would almost forgive them for being a bit rusty, having not played for a long time um, together but no they, they started straight back in and um, it was a very solid defensive performance and we all know how it went attacking as well well yeah six different goal scorers and two of them were in the back four that, that can't happen often a, a third of the goals coming from the back um just in front so speaking of goal scorers you've got Brannigan in that same position um obviously he didn't want to score from the spot he wanted to score from open play so that was <laughs> that was <laughs> meditated we're going to stick with that um i think a few times this season um he's been in a position where it, as a as a fan you can sort of maybe see that he really wanted to get that goal coming back from that injury um that's off his back now he can forget about that yeah absolutely i mean listen cam is is the ultimate professional and he was absolutely desperate to get back in um with the goals uh, he's come close on a couple of occasions um, and obviously he, he was first to, to put his name forward to take the penalty on Saturday and um, took him to attempts, which um, we won't let him forget about too easily. <laughs> but um, he got there in the end and yeah, you could see the delight on his face and it's, it's fully deserved. Um, and then sort of the four in front of them, Barker, Sykes, Henry, Lee, any of those can play anywhere across those sort of four positions um yeah. and and then you, you look at the bench and you've got players like ford and Adji and shadipo and they're in the same boat yeah exactly we've got a, a real flexibility there um but behind the striker behind matty um they're all exciting attacking players who offer something slightly different um i think we saw again one of brandon barker's uh one of his best performances for oxford as well so far um, the way he pressed, the way he, he just ran at the defence, he caused a lot of troubles. And I think that's um, those three that you mentioned uh, are, are going to cause any team at this level a lot of problems. Yeah. Um, and then <laughs> Matty Taylor, natural goal scorer, always in the right position. Um, six goal scorers the other day. He wasn't one of them. Will that just make him more determined? Yeah, I think so. He's another one who's... Um, is absolutely desperate to, to get back to, to the scoring ways that he was doing probably over December and January. Um, but he, he offers an awful lot when he's not scoring as well. You look at his movement for James Henry's goal on Saturday and, and he was absolutely instrumental in that. He almost got on the end of it himself. But obviously, luckily, James Henry was there. But that, that came from his movement. And his movement is, is one of the, the best you'll find at this level. So I'm sure even if he's not scoring, he's going to be creating, um, whether in possession or out of possession, just through his movement. Yeah, um, right. Okay, so the bench is exactly the same. I think it it was sort of an easy decision, <laughs> wasn't it? Surely, uh, it, probably the easiest of the season. Yeah, I think so. I think, um, I mean, I, I don't think anybody who, who stepped on the pitch had a bad performance on Saturday. So it's not surprising to see no changes at all from the entire squad. And hopefully if, if they can replicate that performance or that level and that standard, which I know they've been looking to do, um, then it'll be a very tough afternoon for, for Shrewsbury. Um, but it's whether they can do that in such a, a quick succession is 
it would be very difficult to do that um, from Saturday to Tuesday to replicate that. But I'm sure that's what exactly what they'll be looking to do today. Yeah, uh, I completely agree. And normally at this stage, uh, or when I when I speak to you on Match Day Live, I'm talking about the feeling down there. There must be a really fine balance with this where you can't sit back because of the confidence from the other day, but you've got to use that confidence. So it's a, a case of sort, of sort of remembering the feeling, but forgetting it as well. Yeah, exactly. You, you can't, um, just, just like you can't dwell on defeat, so you can't um, almost get too carried away when, when you play well. So I'm sure they'll... Um, they will have done their homework on, on Shrewsbury um, and we'll be looking to, to kind of uh, press them again um, and see, f find ways of how they can um, get into them and get behind them. Um, yeah, like I said, you, you, can't, um, you can't take it for granted. You can't expect another performance like that and you can't expect the goals to come so easily because almost everything we hit went into the back of the net on Saturday. Yeah, it's like you're nearly getting hit by footballs at the minute. Um, <laughs> right, OK. Well, thank you very much. Um, my next guest is here. But before I speak to him, um, here is what Sam Long had to say about his new contract. I couldn't be happier. Uh, Three-year deal, how do you feel? No, I'm absolutely buzzing. Um, obviously, in the summer, when I signed my, my first deal to keep me here for this year, it was obviously uncertain times and stuff, and I didn't know what was going to obviously happen. But... I managed to, to to get in the team, stay in the team, and and obviously prove that I'm 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 good enough to play week in week out. And now I've earned the three year three year contract, like you said. I'm just just can't wait to get going again and and, and kick on. You didn't just well, I don't know. It's the motivation, I guess, when you've only got a one year contract to show you deserve a longer deal. I guess that was in the back of your head. Well, that's how much research you've done. I had a two year contract. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> but no, I, you know what I'm like. I, I, I'll never like rest on my laurels and, and think and just take a back seat. I'll always work, work as hard as I can to to improve as much as I can, and and I, I feel like I've done that this year, and I've, I've proved to probably a lot of people that I'm I'm good enough to be to be playing every week. What were you eight when you signed? That's my homework. Eight yeah. years old. Yeah. You could Great. never have imagined you'll still be here all these years. No, I know. It's just ridiculous. No, obviously I'll be 29 when this contract finishes, so <laughs> it's hell of a, hell of a long stint. It is. Uh, well, we've discussed the, the testimonial. We'll, we'll get uh, Andy Wings all styles back for it. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you ever think you know you might be here until you're 30? Well, it's a strong possibility, isn't yeah. it? But. I love it here, do you know what I mean? It's obviously my hometown club, but we're also pushing to, in the right direction and, and that's obviously what I want to do. I want to play as high as possible and I feel like we've got the right foundations here to be able to, to move on in, into the, the championship and beyond. So, no, it's, as much as I love being here, I love being at a club that's ambitious as yeah. well. So. Brilliant to see Sam Long signing a new contract after um, sort of coming up through the ranks. Um, and yeah, uh, another three years, that's got to be a good thing. Joined by Peter Rose Brown. Hello. Um, three years, he's got a while on you yet, hasn't he? Uh, but yeah, it will never catch me. <laughs> Fair enough. How long has he been here though? It's three years now and then so... Well, apparently he actually signed when he was eight. Yeah. So he's it, it, been here 16 years in total, but as yeah. a professional footballer, oh, 16 years. it's going to be eight or nine, isn't it? Since yeah. he signed his first yeah. contract. Good man. Yeah. Got to do a few years before I guess to 37. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, yes. So um, let's talk about football. First of all, uh, six nil at the weekend. Uh, were you ever involved in a six nil win? Uh, or loss? <laughs> uh, here uh, for the yellows. No, I don't think a six. Uh, a six nil win for the Blues. Newcastle uh, won six nil at the Bridge. Uh, lost six nil to Rotherham uh, at Chelsea, which was one of the worst games of my life ever. <laughs> ever. Um, not my fault though. Um, but with Oxford, I think the biggest win was five five. I think. And um, when when that happens, either way, how do you use that in the next game? Because you can't get. I was, I was just saying to to Liam Potter, you can't get too carried away if you've won it. You can't get too downbeat if you've lost it, but you've got to use the momentum if you have won it. And so it's a, a fair balance, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But you, you look at the weekend before and then everyone's you know, putting you to bed and saying you, you, promotion's out of the way and you know, playoffs are out of the way because you lost to, to, to a couple of teams over the follow previous weekend. But all of a sudden you go out against a decent team against Crew, 
and you're going to stuff them six, could have been seven, could have been eight. Mm. Um, answers your question. Um, I think maybe because the pressure was off a little bit on Saturday, but the pressure's on a little bit again now, but it's been put back on. But you have to deal with pressure in the pro game. If you can't deal with it, you're in the wrong game. Uh, the gaffer will say that was Saturday, tonight's a different game, and the players will know that they've got to replicate what they did. Why did they win 6 0? Because they were played high up the pitch, uh, everyone closed the ball down well. Yeah. Yeah, Barker's had a tremendous start, and in fact, we didn't start well. Uh, we had 20 minutes where we didn't start well, but we didn't concede. I think that's that's a massive thing for us. Uh, but once you know, once we get momentum going, you know, and Barker's doing his bit, and, and and people are making good runs, and as I said before, make sure we play high up the pitch with our back four, condenses everything in midfield, which helps us. You know, we've got enough quality in the back. If you keep your back four and Jack, if you keep, keep solid, you've got a chance of winning games. Yeah, yeah. Don't concede, and you've got at least a point. There you go. If you if you score any, then you've won. Yeah. Um, right. The uh, the reason I'm talking to you about football, other than the fact you were a, a phenomenal footballer, uh, is because Kath isn't here because she's training with the women's team. You used to be involved with the women's team. Yeah. Um, when we were back at the Manor, I when I was coaching in the uh, community, I ended up I was manager. Of the I used to go and help out uh, Mick Stockwell uh, over in Whitney, uh, where, where they used to train used to help him out and, uh, and it was fine I enjoyed it and then I took over as manager uh, with Mick as my assistant loved that as well played Sundays trained twice a week I think in the evenings uh, and then we they went quite big actually we ended up playing at the manor on Sundays a uh, fairly good standard yeah good some decent players um, and then I stepped down as manager uh, became chairman of the women's football team uh, employed a couple of managers and uh, yeah, some great times. Great drinking, by the way. The girls can drink better than the boys. I can, I can believe that. I went to see uh, one of the games earlier this season when we were allowed to, and um, and yeah, they seemed like a, a great <laughs> bunch, and, and I suspect could drink me under the table. Um, uh, so three one at the weekend. Did you catch the game? At yeah, time? just caught glimpses of it. I was I was busy doing other things, but I uh, didn't want to miss it. So yeah, um, great result, good performance. I thought the girls played really well. Again. And knock it about well and you know they, they obviously Liam's a good coach um but I thought the third goal was a cracker yeah you know phenomenal you know, took it really well oh. but no they, they were they were a good bunch and so, so back in the day we had a we had a few decent strikers and um I used to join in but I used to fear for my life and some of the tackling honestly they, they could they could uh could uh, rattle into me but that was good good times yeah um right okay in your your new life at oxford united uh who are today's match sponsor um charles peters recruitment um uh, richard hales in charge there charles peters are a company based in warwickshire but he's an oxford boy oxfordshire boy and he's moved out many years ago to warwickshire but his heart and soul is oxford united so uh, he's always done business with us he sponsored a game last year he was due to sponsor the manager when we played sunderland last year M40 accident didn't make the game, so he's transferred the money over to other things that we do. So he's, he's very Oxford United through and through. Uh, supported our golf days as well. So he's a good man, Richard. So I'd like to thank him for supporting us tonight, and he'll be selecting man of the match. And it is quite flexible. If people want to get involved, there are lots of ways that people can. It's not just match sponsorship. That's no. obviously a good way. Yeah. But there are other things you can do. Match sponsorship, you can sponsor the manager for the, for the evening. Uh, or the day, um, and you get to have a bit of a Zoom call with the gaffer before kickoff. You know, you get your name in. in uh, we do print a program. You get your name in the program. Uh, you get you get stuff on the website, and we give you advertising. So it's not going to break your bank. You know, all the money that you haven't spent in lockdown, put it back into the club. Uh, you can sponsor the ball, which means you get to sign match ball after the game. Um, there's lots of different ways that we can we can package things up, and you know, we're very flexible anyway. So. Yeah, and then any any success that the, the club has, you know that you've been a part of as well. Exactly. It's not just that it's good for your business, it's that you can look and go, we contributed. Yeah, we've had that a few times. And obviously when we've had some some businesses that have been new to us this year with the match sponsors, uh, they've co contacted me the next day and said, during the game, you know, their advert, advert in, in uh, next door to the manager's dugout has been seen and they've had phone calls during the game from a mate or somebody would say, listen, I see you're watching and I see you've sponsored the game, uh, scaffolding, building, accountants, you know, one man bands and it, and it works, you know, so it yeah. does work. But it's not, don't take my word for it. <laughs> no, but also with the flags in the stands as well, um, yeah. you know, how many times have have we rewatched that goal by Barker at the weekend? That's a home game. 
people are watching him running past the the, the advertising. Is As when I was a player, I um, I just used to watch football and just watch the end. But now I'm on the commercial side. Every time a goal goes in, I'm thinking, oh, they just picked up the M group, or just picked up, <laughs> or that's and and if they, if, if Matty Taylor, when he scores, which is due to, I think later, um, when he scores, I'm going to have to ask him to run that way now and again because he's, you know, because so, that ad advertising board needs a bit of uh, exposure. So, but it's quite funny, you know, that it's uh, we. You see the game differently, and I'm looking at ad boards now instead of the game. But there, I mean, it does happen when you you look at at particular shirt sponsors, certain brands, and so on, and you think of a certain player, or you think of a certain win, or, or yeah. whatever it is. It does become associated with what's happening on the pitch. Yeah, it is, and then you know you get the photographs, and then you get the the replays and everything else, especially with the digital stuff as well. When we when we got the cup games, the digital thing on the uh, the LED around the pitch is amazing. But uh, what we've got here is decent and it's, it's all visible, it's all good and uh, still lots to offer if, if people need it. Yeah, so how can people get involved? Just again, just uh, email us on commercial at OUFC.co.uk um, or give us a call But when because we're still on furlough, Adam and I, but the phones are ringing back home on the mobile even though if we're not sat in the office drinking coffee. <laughs> yeah, and, and working very hard. As always. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned Matty Taylor's going to score. Now, each time I ask you if he's going to score on AUFC picks, if you say yes, he doesn't. And if you say no, he does. So I'm going to ask you, you're going to say no. Is Matty Taylor going to score today? Of course he's not. <laughs> Excellent. Good. That's what I want to hear. Um, so, yeah, that's another good way that people can get involved with the club because it is connected to the commercial side slightly. It is, yeah, yeah. We have kickbacks and stuff as well. Um, but it's fun as well. You know, most importantly, you do it and then, yeah, are we having? Are we going to have six or seven corners? Yeah, we may be. Or how many tackles is? I know you asked me how many tackles is Alex Gowen going to make, and I knew he wasn't playing, so I said. <laughs> um, but no, it's it's a bit of fun, you know, and, and it's it's fine. If you don't, you've had a go, and, I, and it's I, free. I, it's free, and I, I can't do it anyway because obviously I'm, in, I'm employed by the club because I know everything about football. Yeah, I know nothing about football. <laughs> you've also said uh, about um, Seth Peters recently. They look strong at the weekend. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. You know, James Henry's back, and, and, if, and if James is not on it, uh, you, you got, you've got you got other players that can come in and take. But James Lee, is quality. Brannigan, yeah. Ford off the bench. Yeah, Ford off the bench, yeah, and another assist I think on uh, uh, on Saturday. But no, you've got you've got some players that can stick the ball in the right area. You know, even though I will question some of the goalkeepers, uh, some of the goalkeeping errors on Saturday. Um, I'm not taking anything away from Josh Ruffles' header, but. That'd be funny. I think I could have caught that. But don't <laughs> tell Josh. Let's not argue with it. <laughs> and then Elliot, then Elliot, then Elliot Small, first touch, you know, his goal, the third goal. His touch was a bit of a bad one. And the keeper should have come and smothered it, but because he was having a bad time, um, if, if I'm in goal, you know. Yeah, I think it's one of those things. The mistakes will happen, and then you, it's the the first to react to it, isn't yeah. it? Or the, uh, and capitalising on it. And and when you get those mistakes, the, the pressing led to a mistake for the second goal. Um, and it's about capitalising on it. it. Is, yeah, yeah. You know. I'm, I'm only teasing. I mean, all goals were taken really well. Um, but just on another thing that we are... We nearly got a view of an own goal. That would have been... Yeah, phenomenal. I love that one. <laughs> um, but if uh, we're moving on for next season, because obviously we're, we're getting to the end of the season now, nearly, what are we, April now? Um, yes. We are starting to plan for next season. Difficult to plan when we don't know what Boris is going to say. However, we are we have got plans to open the corridor, hopefully for boxes. We have got fans. Yeah, hopefully the fans will be back. But certainly advertising and everything else is going to kick on. So uh, if anyone's thinking about joining us and you know have, have a chat during the summer, if not earlier, just give us Put a call. Put the name in the hat now. Yeah, 100%. Um, so just one more time, that email address? Uh, commercial at oufc.co.uk or 01865 337503. Excellent. Uh, and you get to speak to either this legend or the legend that is Adam. Yeah, this one. I'll Let's, go. <laughs> Let's go for that. Uh, right. OK. Um, I really want to introduce this next link with its hammer time, but that might annoy him. It's Timmy Mallet. Timmy, my old friend, how are you? Oh, this is brilliant. <laughs> I'm here. I'm allowed in. <laughs> I'm so excited. I, I couldn't put a game on for you, unfortunately. Um, why are you here? Tell the people at home why you're here. I'm here to say thank you. 
thank you to football for all the wonderful entertainment during lockdown it's been really vital actually in a number of ways particularly for mental health and then look at the club it stepped up and said yep we can help the NHS with the vaccinations and I'm really really impressed and eternally grateful to football uh, across the country and so this particular ride is to go and thank my local clubs in the Thames Valley so you are uh, well explain about today and then you've done the London clubs as well explain today first I think so today I've been cycling the Thames Valley uh, football clubs uh, Maidenhead United playing in the National League Reading in the championship Oxford of course yeah the mighty use got to make the playoffs Devo. and then I'm going to go to Wickham are you going to be wearing that shirt when you go there what do you think yeah well they made me cry last time I saw them so <laughs> <laughs> uh, and last question for me how have you been for the last year you are Mr Positivity have you been Mr Positivity for the whole year it's important to remember that each and every day is a blessing and it's wonderful yesterday's history tomorrow a mystery today's a bonus enjoy every minute of it and this morning I woke up and the snow was coming down and the family looked at me and said you're nuts and that was all the cue I needed to get my pals out I brought my pals today there's Terry um, who is Canadian and only understands ice hockey Which side of the road have you been pedaling on? Uh, yeah, exactly and then David my vicar and uh, he's come along just to give a blessing to Oxford and make sure we make the playoffs <laughs>
we had a lot fewer pre-orders this time so obviously the order the quantity that we ordered from the printers was reduced which means that uh we've, still, we've got about half a dozen left or so but if you want one you better get in quick because uh they will go email program at ufc.co.uk and what's in it is all the usual brilliant things that we can offer in it so you know match action news views statistics history uh Comments from the chairman and the manager, all sorts of wonderful, wonderful content. Interview Elliot Nor, well, lovely man. And how can people get hold of one? By emailing program at ofc.co.uk. I will then get back to whoever emails in with the uh, information required on how to make the payment. Um, do not send card details on the email, it's not very secure. Uh, but uh, get in there soon. We've only got uh, three more home games left after this one. Yeah, so, it's yeah. incredible. I mean, it's. Maybe. It's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go with four. Yeah. Um, it's incredible to be mid-April, knowing that the season is ending so, so soon, but yeah. still six games to go. Well, that's right, yeah. And it's, in some ways, I mean, it's been such a... It's been a, a long season, but in a shorter frame of time, if you know what I mean. So the season had not start of September, really. Mm. So all the games have been condensed into a much shorter period, which makes it feel it's gone on longer. Um, so I'm sure that there are a lot of people out there who could do a break. Hopefully there'll be three extra games to play at the end of it, so breaks are yeah, next delayed. Yeah, delayed. <laughs> things are in the championship. Yes. Yeah. Um, right. Okay. Uh, something that I've noticed during this weird season, and I think Carl Robinson is quite good at, at bringing out in teams. Um, a lot of records have changed recently. So, yes, we won six nil away last season, but we matched it again this season. You've got the record-breaking run. Are these sort of things changing all the time? Meeting Fleetwood for the first time. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> are, they, are these sort of things changing all the time and we maybe don't notice or don't talk about it as much? Or sometimes when you've got a manager like Carl Robinson, do they change sort of more frequently? Well, that's a good question. Um, yeah, I'm surprised to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, think, um, I think they do happen a lot of the time. Uh, we don't know this. Uh, well, we, we flag it up when we do on it, because no, obviously, but like I said, last season we beat, we beat the away record. Um, the record has to be set sometime. That was in that case, it was uh, a few years ago. But well, well, in our promotion season from League Two, we equals the previous away record twice. So, so yeah, I mean, I think it does happen all the time, but maybe we notice it more because uh, you always notice it more when you're playing well. You'll notice a record run of wins more than you notice a record run of defeats, for example. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. but. Uh, yeah, so I think, and I do think that the way Carl's got the team playing, um, they're more prone to get big results like on Saturday. They're more prone to maybe uh, get the good uh, streaks of wins like we had um, earlier in the season. Um, well, and we've seen each season he's been in charge. The tail ends of the seasons usually are such a good running. Yeah. And and that's exactly what we need now. And hopefully, exactly we'll what we need now. Yeah, I mean, like I say, for, uh, after today or during today, six games left. Mm -hmm. um, so that's uh, six times three, 18 points to play for. Go for it. Yeah. Yeah, perfectly achievable. Uh, right, okay. Well, thank you very much for joining. You've got to go and do your, your Twitter. Um, but the uh, this was the team we played against for 125th. It was, yes. And uh, I have the rewind right here.
Okay, so Chris Williams is uh, going to be writing the match report during the game. Uh, Liam Potter will be filming the moments you missed, and Martin Brodetsky will be off doing the Twitter account. I'll be on Instagram if you want to keep up with the stories there. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and I'm going to leave you with uh, the highlights from the latest player to sign a new contract. It's Sam Long. Thanks very much for watching, and goodbye.